But in bhakti yoga especially, under the guidance of the spiritual master, you become empowered to begin to have your own spiritual experiences. Just like Sachinananda Swami uh, the other day was saying that how much are you absorbed in Krishna? We're in Vrindavan, how much absorbed are we in Krishna? How can we, let, how can we waste our time being absorbed in anything else? Anything else meaning you know, too much shopping or too much eating or you know, these kind of things. Krishna is here, we want to just simply become absorbed in Krishna. Because the more we become absorbed in Krishna, then the more spiritual our consciousness becomes, and the more we can begin to directly see that Krishna is everywhere. Everywhere in Vrindavan. So while you're in Vrindavan, basically, as long as you don't make Vaishnava Purad, or offenses to the Holy Dham, basically you can hardly uh, uh, not make any advancement while you're here. Even with every breath you breathe, by being in Vrindavan, showing respect for the Holy Dham, respect for the devotees, respect for the fact that this is Krishna's holy land, you cannot help but make spiritual advancement. That's the, the, that's the advantage of uh, bhakti yoga. So basically, as long as we don't make any offenses to other Vaishnavas or to the Holy Dham, then basically there's no way we're going to be able to do anything except continue to make it spiritual advancement. And for those of us that are getting older, we can figure, well, I only got maybe 10 or 20 years left. You know, if I can just hang on, you know, I'm going to be making some progress. I'm going to be out of here by the time this time to give up this body. As long as I don't blow it by making too many offenses. So this is the advantage of bhakti yoga. It is meant to bring you to the position where you have the divine eyes that Krishna has given to Arjuna wherein he can see the universal form. But once again, the universal form is frightening. It's not something that you can fall in love with. That's why at the end, when, Krishna, when Arjuna sees Krishna's universal form, he says, kindly, kindly let me see that original form of yours. So that that's the form that he's attracted to. So then Krishna again reduces his energy and shows his forearm form and then his two-arm form. And that's the form that, uh, that Arjuna is very familiar with. He's in love with that form, just as we can become in love with that same form, because Krishna is the God of love. And you don't see that. The fact of the matter is, you can't say that about anybody else. You can't say that about Shiva, Brahma. You can't say that about Ganesh. You can't say that about any other of the divinities in Vedic culture. The only God of love there is, really, is Krishna. And that's what he's here for. Simply so that we can fall in love with Krishna. By understanding him, understanding his personality, understanding his activities, his pastimes, his characteristics, his form, and by also purifying, remember, we have to purify our consciousness so that we can attain that love and see uh, the spiritual nature of God. So then, the whole point, remember, is that by engaging in proper sadhana, well, what is the purpose of sadhana? You know, that's another thing. What is the purpose of sadhana? If you want to purify your consciousness, if you want to purify your mind, what do you first have to do? You first have to purify your activities. This is the whole point of sadhana. You purify your activities, on the outside, it begins to affect and purify or spiritualize the, the, on the inside, the consciousness, so that eventually you can attain that vision of Krishna as the God of love, uh, a loving partner for you, and a means by which we can also enter into that spiritual platform and actually see and perceive things on that spiritual dimension. That is really the whole process of sadhana, sadhana bhakti. <coughs> Purifying the activities on the outside so that we can purify and then spiritualize our consciousness on the inside.